the narrator introduces us to Chris, a documentary filmmaker. The narrator recounts a peculiar yet intriguing incident that occurred on Chris's seventh birthday, and Chris, who was deeply passionate about his documentary work, explains to the camera why he chose that particular subject. Chris shares a story from his childhood, from when he was just seven years old. His parents were in the midst of a severe argument, and his mother had stormed out of the house, but then vanished without a trace. When Chris's father went after her, he encountered a strange light, which was fortuitously captured on Chris's camera. His father believed it was an alien spaceship that had abducted his wife. And this sequence of occurrences deeply influenced Chris, imprinting an indelible mark on his life. As Chris matured, he and his friend Brent embarked on a quest to substantiate the theory of alien abduction, which he firmly believed was the cause behind his parents vanishing during his early years. Their first stop was Roswell, and upon meeting a local guide and a man named Bill, they discover that what was once a small peaceful village has transformed. The news of alien abductions had drawn thousands of people to the area, and today there are over hundreds of exhibitions and conferences dedicated to studying this phenomena, all overseen by Bill. Even though the theory was met with great enthusiasm, Chris regarded it as immature. He harbored doubts about the credibility of those who subscribed to it, including a woman who tried to peddle him goods adorned with the image of the alleged extraterrestrial wreaking havoc on the city. His skepticism was clearly reflected in his behavior toward her, and Chris's dismissive stance did not sit well with others. His conduct was countered with the suggestion that while it's beneficial to be skeptical, maintaining an open mind can sometimes be crucial in revealing the truth. Despite this counsel, Chris remained unpersuaded, and in the course of an interview with a person who professed to have an encounter with an alien, Chris brushed off the individual's narrative as an instance of fabricated memory syndrome. Chris's dismissive attitude ignited a wave of indignation, resulting in Bill's sudden exit from the scene. Subsequently, Chris came across a story of Emily Reed, as Emily had been the victim of numerous alien kidnappings. Fascinatingly, these kidnappings took place on every seventh birthday throughout Emily's life. Yet after each incident, Emily was left with no memory of the alien's actions toward her, and regardless of this fact, Chris was convinced that Emily's experiences would serve as a basis for an engaging documentary. It is important to highlight that Emily's 28th birthday, which is just around the corner in two days, could signify another possible kidnapping. This pattern bears a chilling resemblance to that of Chris's mother, who was similarly abducted by aliens on her 7th birthday. Emily confides in him that no matter where he travels or what actions he takes, the aliens always manage to locate him. He contemplates the source of his necklace, even though he's cognizant of Emily's encounters, he maintains a skeptical outlook. Unbeknownst to him, his viewpoint was on the verge of a substantial transformation, and as he makes his way back, he observes some unusual lights following him. Out of the blue, his car crashes into an object that he can't identify, and when he gets out to assess the situation, he comes across nothing familiar. This event signifies the start of a shift in his convictions. After some time, he spots a terrifying figure resembling an alien hiding in the bushes, and fear takes hold, and he flees the scene with Chris. Is. When Brent reviews the recorded footage, he identifies the same alien figure that had been causing fear amongst the city's inhabitants. The following day, he sets out to learn more about the alien entity, when he uncovers a peculiar piece of information. After Emily's most recent abduction, an unusual memory device was discovered inside her body. It is believed that this device is of alien origin, and this apparatus is believed to possess the capability to obliterate specific segments of an individual's memory. This could prove an explanation for why all the victims, Emily included, have no memory of their experiences after being abducted. Chris makes a plea for the gadget for his research purposes, but his plea is turned down. He suggests that Emily undergo regression therapy, and this therapeutic technique could potentially help her recall the events that transpired during her abduction. However, Emily informs him that she's already tried this approach, but for some reason, it was unsuccessful. Throughout the therapy, health took a severe downturn, and by the session's end, he was incapable of retrieving any memories. 
The location where the device had been inserted was also disclosed to him, an audacious thought occurred to Chris, leading him to decide to proliferate the memory device. They were able to successfully steal the gadget, in the midst of their flight when Chris tried to examine his gadget, it discharged a potent electrical shock. The most surprising moment occurs when he comes back, the local guide informs him that he had been missing for over an hour. This disclosure leaves them both in a state of shock. They immediately review the footage from their car mounted cameras, and what they see leaves them dumbfounded. After two hours, they had parked the car and sat idle, and then without any apparent reason, the car started moving and drove off. Chris was baffled by this occurrence, and driven by a desire to understand what happened, he becomes even more determined. He decides to meet Emily the following day, and the next day was her birthday, and according to the theory, she will be abducted by aliens. Emily agrees to accept his help and plans to spend her birthday with some villagers, and she believes that he is the only one who can help her. This decision sets the stage for their journey, and Emily guides them to a mysterious location known as Ansazi. Theories suggest that this place was constructed with the assistance of aliens, but the mystery behind it remains unresolved. Upon meeting the village chief, he learns about a ritual that could potentially dissuade the alien from abducting Emily, and this ritual is based on an agreement made by his ancestors with the alien. As the time for the ritual approaches, they consume a juice concocted from a special herb, and the consumption of the juice induces a peculiar feeling in all three of them, but Chris is affected the most. He begins to have visions of aliens, oddly shaped monuments, a sort of prison, and a force pulling him toward it. These visions were so intense that they felt like a horrifying dream to him, and upon emerging from his hypnotic stupor, he promptly sets about recording the details of his extraordinary encounter. This event signifies the commencement of the film's narrative. As time progresses, he is stuck by a sobering truth. His attempt to ward off the extraterrestrial beings have been unsuccessful, and he is destined to be seized by them again. In addition, he reveals a vital piece of information, and the aliens have chosen him for an important mission, a mission that has slipped from his memory over the course of time. The questions that arise now are, what is this task, and what have the aliens lost? Today happens to be Emily's birthday, and since the ritual has proven to be ineffective, Chris sets out to find safe haven. However, by the time he starts his search, it's already too late, and the aliens have surrounded and abducted him. When Chris regains consciousness, the truth behind the aliens' abduction stories is unveiled, and as it turns out, all the supposed alien sightings were nothing more than a hoax. The local guide and Bill himself were the masterminds behind this scheme, and they would kidnap people and inject them with a potent hallucinogenic drug and manipulate their memories to fabricate stories of alien abductions. Their motive was to make the town infamous and profit off the ensuing attention, and they've encountered that extraterrestrial being multiple times. It was unveiled that Bill was the culprit. His ability to engineer these advanced illusions stemmed from his experience as an independent contractor. Before the group of three could fall prey next, Chris, while they were distracted, capitalizes on a chance. He succeeds in breaking free from the confinement and discovers himself stranded right over an unusual structure. However, by this time, Bill and his accomplice had arrived, but before Bill could take any action against them, they witnessed a miraculous sight in the dry, barren landscape, vibrant and colorful clouds advancing toward them. Ultimately, an alien spaceship emerged from the clouds, and the spaceship lands on the very same monument, indicating that this monument was nothing more than a landing zone all along. Upon seeing the situation, he begins to draw Emily toward him, and Chris, without wasting a moment, rushes to rescue her. As soon as she breaks free, her eyes open directly into the alien spaceship, which appears to be constructed from some sort of plasma or neon technology. And Emily is connected to a memory device which is displaying memories of her mother. It is revealed that her mother had passed away due to some unknown case, and the secret of the necklace is also unveiled, and it was apparently her mom's. Chris manages to bring Emily back to consciousness, and somehow, they both manage to escape, to begin their search for a way out of the world. However, before they can make their next move, they find themselves encircled by two aliens. 
Out of fear, Chris questions them, what do you want? In response, the aliens use the same memory device to project some of his past memories. The memories reveal the disturbing truth about his father, how he used to abuse him and his mom, and it also comes to light that his dad was the one who had abducted his mother. But the most shocking revelation is that he, along with his mom, was also abducted by aliens, a fact that he had no recollection of until now. He asserts that he is a human being, a product of millions of years of evolution, and in this particular phase of his life, his self-identity became firmly established. He was perpetually consumed by rage, which resulted in the fruition of something of great value, and this could, possibly, be the capacity to experience love. His deeds were primarily aimed at obliterating and distressing recollections of human beings, and he held the conviction that by modifying their history, he could transform their destiny. Fundamentally, he aspired to alter his own situation through the mechanism of time travel, and this is why he was conducting experiments on humans by abducting Emily, he was able to erase the traumatic memories of his mother. This is the reason he had no recollection of his parents. However, Emily pleads with him to let them live their lives as they wish, and despite their circumstances, they were content, and coming to the realization of his own humanity, he makes the decision to set them free. Eventually, they find their way back to Earth, and Brent stumbles upon them while he was on the trail of the extraterrestrial spacecraft, and this revelation rapidly disseminates through the media channels. And the hypothesis of alien kidnapping is hence disproved, and also Chris's genuine account is dismissed by everyone. The story swiftly moves forward, and in an amusing twist, Brent, in his clumsiness, lets the cake slip from his hands, and the film wraps up with a detailed close-up of the cake lying in the ruins of the floor. Upon viewing the end of the movie, it seems that their existence has regained its usual rhythm, devoid of any extraterrestrial disruptions. And it's almost as if their lives have been restored to the peaceful normality that they once knew before the alien encounters.